Welcome, Carm Capriato, the Service Aftermarkets Podcast Pioneer with the gold standard of aftermarket business podcasts. Join me for aftermarket insights as we advance the aftermarket. And as always, know that you'll learn just one thing. Find us on your favorite podcast listening app and RemarkableResults.biz or on my YouTube channel. Hey, everybody. It's Carm Capriato again. Vision 2024. I don't know how many is that, fifth or sixth or seventh one. I just don't know, guys. I'm losing track. I didn't get my afternoon nap. That was the problem. That was the problem. Hey, thanks so much to Napa Auto Care. They sponsored us here this year. If you aren't a Napa Auto Care member, please contact your store or talk to your salesperson. Thank you so much to Napa Auto Care. We are having a blast here at Vision, meeting so many old friends, meeting a lot of new people. And I've got a great episode for you. David Boys is here, president of today's class. Hello, David. Hello. You and I have done maybe a couple. I think this is number three. Number three. And he's got this incredible product that's called Today's Class. And we have AJ Neely with us from Neely's out in five, five locations in Maryland. And you use Today's Class. We do. And also with me is Patrick Roberts, shop foreman, Christian Brothers in Indiana. Yes, sir. Hey, man, good to have you here. And you guys use it in a couple of different ways. So David is here to help us walk through what today's class is. I love this product. I hear from too many people. Our great friend, Matt Fonslow, uses it. And AJ, hey, I will not crash into your cool little thing about AJ wants to always be on the top of the leaderboard. And what does that mean? And we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, thank you so much to Napa Tracks, who sponsors the Academy Mastermind. Did you know that Napa Tracks has on-site training plus six days a week support? Well, it all starts when a local representative meets with you to learn about your business and how you run it. After all, it's your shop, so it's your choice. Let us prove to you that Tracks is the single best shop management system in the business. Find Napa Tracks on the web at N-A-P-A-T-R-A-C-S dot com. Okay, so before we even get in, and I almost take the baton over to you, it was cool before we turn on the mics. Today's class pops questions and you feel a thing, and, and AJ has a gamification thing going on in the business, and if AJ's not on the top of the gamification leaderboard, you're pissed. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know what that is. Just, yeah, the competitor, you know, in me, so. Not the competitor. But yeah, no, it, start, it starts from the top. Right. I mean, so it's just more of a lead by example. Right. And so if David and I had been talking about this before, there needs to be intentionality behind your training program, whatever that might be. And it's got to start with you. You got to be leading by example. You got to have the curious mind. You got to want to be there. You got to want to be better than you were yesterday. Yeah. And it starts with you. Tell us about today's class. I mean, you've been on before. If I know you, you're constantly improving and adding. What's yeah. going on? Yeah, we're, we're really trying to enhance the overall experience. So simply put, we're trying to make training and information that is helpful to a technician, a service advisor, or a manager readily accessible, dynamic, adjusting to what they need day by day, season by season. Pushing that through an experience as such as a mobile app helps us make that achievable. But yeah, we're looking to extend the services we offer, taking it for more beyond daily training, beyond an adaptive learning environment to making information more broadly available to managers as well. So for example, a few months ago, we started getting into text message-based reporting where we can push out messages to managers on Monday mornings and let them know who was training, who wasn't, who's on the leaderboard. Because a lot of the, particularly in the independent shop market that we work with, reporting is great if you have time to review it. And not all of our customers do. Some have the time to dig in and get a little deeper. But if we've got the data and we can push it directly to your phone and let you know what's what might need your attention, we think that's a valuable step for them. Isn't it amazing that text is it? I send emails to people and I don't get an answer for three days. And then I text them and I says, would you please read your email? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it amazing? And then I get a reply right away. 98% open rate. I it's think it brilliant is. that you do, decided to do text because if I was a manager leading my team on their, you know, their training initiative or efforts, and I got this in my phone, it's almost, it's hand to eye. Yeah, it streamlines it a bit. And obviously we're seeing that with, with shops as well, text to pay and so forth. I mean, I think we're all coming to the realization that this can be a more direct way to communicate. So in our view, you have got the data, we've got somebody that needs that data. If we can get it to them in a more streamlined and accessible fashion. But I can still go online and look at dashboards. Yeah. Well, and in about two weeks, you know, another step comes to that where there's a connection there. You will get a text that has a link, which will take you directly to the report in the app. Nice. So we're really trying to just make that easier to get to. Again, lots of great data available, but we got to know what you benefit from and at what frequency you need it. What do I see on the dashboard? Oh, you see tons of usage frequency, 
data. You can see uh, participation statistics, knowledge statistics, number of questions answered, confidence levels, usage patterns, you know, all of that is available. So there's a great depth of data that somebody can dig into. But again, we need to recognize that not every shop owner is going to have the time or the interest to get that deep. So we need to do our job, understand from that shop owner what their requirements are and carve out that piece that's relevant to them and deliver it to them in the way they do. So that. custom, are you talking to me about that people can set up switches that give them different information? Essentially, yeah. I mean, it's it's not, we're not custom coding it each time. It's basically configuration options right, where yeah. we can say, look, you know, we'll, we'll send you this information at this time. Okay. This new text feature I was describing, the way that works is you can go to a registration form and check off, I want this one, this one, and this one. Cool. Maybe you just want one of them yeah. and that's fine. You'll get it on Monday morning. How are you using it, Patrick? It's super nice for us because the reporting is very deep. You check it out yourself and it's overwhelming at first. So we get usage texted to us, top scores, and then we do the color fill game where you can do the questions at the same time. And we're really competitive with it. Explain color fill. So you got 25 moves to fill a whole board in the same color where you, there's different colors. There's four colors. It's like Tetris. Kind of, sort of. You start in the top left corner and you want to fill the whole board and get rid of all the colors. Really? And then the questions are sprinkled throughout. And I don't know what it is about it, but it's addicting <laughs> and it's super competitive Sounds for so us. so simple too. Good for, good yeah. for you, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, and gamification is something that we have. The default gamification on the platform is really about learning and rewards points and competing with your peers. We've been doing some testing you know, with Pat's group in particular on enabling games that are interspersed through the daily training. And like they are like the, the best case of that where it you know, sinks in and people are very engaged with it. You know, We've always been very careful about introducing that because we don't want a shop owner to perceive, well, hey, they're just playing games. So it's trying to find that right balance about how to leverage it to drive engagement, but not have it be perceived as a distraction. This is all about training and competence on systems and vehicle systems. Agent, give me an idea if you're looking at one of your, and I know you've got your phone on and I know you want to- I'm not playing games either. Oh, okay. You bring it, is it that you can find, you got people here at Vision. Yep. Did your- support selection or guidance on the classes that they're taking come yep. because of what you find or know that's going on with the results from today's class? No, honestly, not necessarily from this. Actually, I'm really just more or less empowering my people to determine looking at the list of classes that are out here to go and pick what they want. Right. But when it comes to the path that they take as far as the training path in the app itself, they also kind of pick where they feel that they need some more questions on. So it can happen either way. The leadership or the owner can set that up for each employee and kind of curate that plan for them individually. But also too, I'll get that feedback from them as far as like what they want, right? You know, for example, we may have, you know, a technician that wants to get a, a break ASC certification. Okay, well, they, look, they have a training path for that. So we'll implement one specific to that. So stop. It's not random. It is purposeful. Yes, it, you're not gonna. Yeah, you're not gonna get a. But it's of, but it's perfor- It's purposeful. If I want to do this, you're gonna send up the questions and look for the right responses. Change it up a little bit. But if someone answers the question that you're satisfied with, will they ever get a, a similar question? Yeah. So the way it works is it's based on priorities, right? So you have a particular job. You're a tire tech, a diagnostic tech, a service advisor, and we want to make sure that the training we're pushing you is along that path or that aimed at that target. Within that, the thing you're probably strong in some areas and weaker in others. So the system will identify where you have weaknesses and it will lean into those. In terms of the frequency with which you might see particular content, it really depends on how high of a priority something is and when you last touched it. The algorithm goes pretty deep in that respect. It might revisit very frequently something that you struggle with. And sometimes that's very frustrating for people. We have heard feedback that say, I do not like that this system keeps revisiting this thing that I'm not good at. It's a you're killing me moment. I don't know, but it, but it, but the system is trying to hold them <laughs> accountable for that knowledge because it's a high priority. It's not, we're I not see. trying to aggravate you, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't let go. It's going to, I love that. Death. I love that word. It doesn't let go. Yeah. Or let go. Yeah. It's true too. Like you pass a question that's been kicking your butt and it could be a month. It could be two months, but that question's coming back. And did you learn it or did you just memorize it in the moment? And most times you just memorize it in the moment and reality comes back and you don't know the answer. Right. And that's really what this is intended to do. Because if you think about the traditional experience where you watch a video and then answer 10 questions after, you're evaluating your short-term memory. Do you know it two weeks later? That's what we're going to try and find out. We are going to come back and revisit because we believe it's important for that to be in your long-term memory and not just to answer that question five minutes after you watch the video. 
Is it okay if we take like a step back to talk about this? Because it just kind of occurs to me and, and we need to also make sure that we're putting ourselves in the shoes of someone listening to this that has never heard of today's class Absolutely. before. Absolutely. Because I feel like obviously we're ex- resident experts, you know, have come up with the program. We use it on a daily basis, but just so everyone's aware, it is an app on your phone that you download. It's part of our onboarding process for every new employee we hire. There's a certain set of apps that we all have to download. It is required to, that you download these either on the, you can even put it on your own phone or on our tablet that we provide. But then in, in that onboarding, we set that expectation that it is expected that you train in this platform. So, and again, really what it is, is it's just, it's microdosing of training, right? It's a set of daily questions, could be four to eight questions on a daily basis. And I'm just going to go out there and say it. We all sit on the toilet every day. You can do the questions right then and there. There is absolutely no excuse. The thing is that the biggest barrier to entry when it comes to training is time. And what I love about this is that it takes no time, right? It takes minutes, right? to do this. So that excuse of what you would hear from people in the past, like, oh, I don't have the time to sit down. Yeah, I get that you may not have the time to sit down in front of a video-based training for hours on end. I get that. That's rough. But there's no excuse that you can't be engaging in this software and in this platform. And so that's what it is. It's just a set of questions. And what I love about it, it's the question after the question. It's how confident are you in your answer? It's low, medium, or high. And so what I love about that is it's in assuming that your technician's advisors are answering that second question correctly, you're understanding their confidence level. And so as a result of that second question, you're getting so much more data on the back end as far as, my goodness, you might have a technician that is honestly extremely smart, but with no confidence, right? Or the other way around, right? Someone that that thinks they know everything, but they actually don't really know this stuff at all. So there's that level right there. That second question when it comes to this is really, is, is that game changer that really can allow you to curate that. that David, what do you do with the confidence question? So it's used a couple of ways. One from the learner's experience, confidence is an emotion and can influence how you retain information. So if you have, if you have high confidence in something and you get it right, your emotional reaction might be more like a you know fist pump, something like that. You feel good about it. Or if you get it wrong, you might be frustrated. Either way, let's imagine you're, you're frustrated. And that question comes back to you in 10 days. That's the question that drove me nuts. So that's the one that tripped me up. It might make it stick with you a little better. So that's one way that confidence can influence the learner's experience. It's an I got this moment. Yeah. Okay. You think about if, if I ask you a trivia question, you have no clue. And I tell you the answer, you're like, okay, so what? I'm probably not going to remember that. But if I trip you up or I make you laugh with that, you know, if there's some sort of emotional confidence, context. The question that we would often throw out when demoing this, you know where I'm going. Oh, I know where you're going. So, so I would ask Pat, so which company do you think manufactures the most tires on an annual basis? And he probably would have said something like what? Pat? Brid- Bridgestone. Mm-hmm. And I told him, no, the answer is Lego, the toy company. Okay. Yeah. I've heard this before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's cool. kind of an old, yeah. and, and, you know, I think there's arguments whether it's actually true or not, but the, the, <laughs> The, the idea is that it made him laugh and he still remembers that answer yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's just the way the emotion can influence memory or an emotion can influence memory. But then in the back end, as AJ's describing, we can understand not only what somebody knows, but what they think they know. Are they highly knowledgeable and lack confidence or do they lack knowledge, but they're very cocky and highly confident on something? And what can we do with that information? Is the tire or question a real question in your system? Yeah. We, oh yeah. We've all seen it. it, it it's amazing. And now I know the real answer. It, so yeah. It's a team, <laughs> but it's a team building. It's a discussion yeah. point, isn't it? It is. And that's, that's the beauty of it is some guys get frustrated because it's ASE-esque, some of the questions, and they trip themselves up. So they'll want to challenge the system or you can report it as a false, like it's not correct. So my response to them would be, well, prove it to me. If you're confident in this, then do your homework. And most times they do their homework and they realize they didn't know as much as they thought they did. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's face it. Your shop management system is the single most important tool in your shop, period. Napa Tracks has made selecting the right shop management system easy by offering the industry's best, most comprehensive SMS. Now, it all starts when a local representative meets with you to learn about your business and how you need to run it. After all, it's your shop, so it's your choice. And having local representation is a huge plus. Customizing tracks to your business, whether you're a one-person shop or a large multi-bay or multi-location company, a representative consults with you to help optimize your shop's workflow, efficiency, and profitability. Trax always has the flexibility to do business how you need to do it, which means it can also grow as your business grows. 
And unlike the other guys, we'll be there for you after installation with the best training and support in the business. Yes, a learning management system tailored to each role in your company. Simply put, Trax was designed and built for shop owners just like you. Visit us on the web at NapaTrax, that's N-A-P-A-T-R-A-C-S dot com. So walk us down the whole gamification side of this, guys, and what you're using it for. Start out, why did you put gamification in it? Well, it's about engagement. So the idea, so so AJ hit on a couple things. Our one, time is a challenge, right? And in our world, so if you mix time with the idea that we need to drive retention and not just challenge them one time, we need them to come back. Right. We need you to come in there regularly. So how do we do that? We got to make it interesting. We got to make it compelling. There are a number of avenues to do that. Relevancy to the training is one from a learning perspective, but then you can also earn rewards points through the platform. And what that facilitates is that within a shop, for example, individuals in that shop can be competing with one another each month about how many points they've earned. It doesn't matter if you're doing difficult training or easy training. It's all about consistency. That leads to some trash talk, some some challenging here and there. And then individual shops can be competing with other shops. Rewards points can also be used to redeem prizes. Different shops have done that in different ways, but you could have, let's say, a rewards points. Store. The shop owns the points and they can do whatever they want with them. Yeah, we can upload prizes for them, for example. So whether it's... it's you know, but they're not coming from you, they're coming from the shop owner. Typically, yes. Okay, cool. I got that. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. smart. For us, for example, is we instituted a, a quarterly like tool bonus, for example, that we'll put on their check every quarter, assuming they hit a certain number of re- rewards points in throughout the that quarter. And what I love too is the ability to customize the reporting, you know, from these guys at today's class. Like, for example, because I'm on a quarterly schedule, they will do an automatic reset of all the points at the end of every quarter. So... April 1 comes around, everyone's back to zero, we start over. I love the quarterly idea because you always have a, a brand new time to just to restart. Yeah, because people can get discouraged. If it was a year long or right, something like right. that, people get discouraged. So, and they just give up, they just stop. But, you know, you hit the reset button every quarter because everyone an opportunity to get back on the horse. That's why we love the game part of it too, just because it adds a fun element. And if you get the top score and whatever the game of the week is, lunch is on me and the way to a text heart for the guys up front is a good lunch. I think I interrupted you, Patrick, when you were talking about colors. <laughs> yeah. Finish that. Yeah. yeah. Finish that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Cause I want to understand it too. Yeah. The color fill. Yeah. Yeah. So you start in the top left corner. It's a square and there's four colors. And your goal is to get all the colors gone in that square in 25 moves. And it is, is each color like a, for a technician or is it? Or oh, no. Is, you, you, uh, just, okay. you just pick them on the side. Okay. Gotcha. It's Tetris esque. But it's not. But what's the what's the colors mean? Oh, no, you just have to make them all go away. Oh, by answering so, questions? It, yes. There'll be questions sprinkled throughout. So if I have, maybe I'm starting, the colors are red, blue, yellow, green. My starting color is red, and I have a green square and a blue square touching the initial square. I pick one of those colors, and I work my way to the middle. Or It's very simple. It's silly, but guys care about it, and the questions are sprinkled out. So if I hit a tile that has a question mark and that tile's green, and I fill in that color, then I have to answer that oh, question Oh, wait a minute. Well. So behind the colors, there's a question? Yeah. The idea is that the game is a, is a way to kind of another hook to get you into the training. Okay. You know, it's Got it. Distracting and a way to distract you almost to, to get you in there. All right. So it's interspersed with that daily training experience that we talk about. So in AJ's group, they're coming in, they're just getting straight training, two to four minutes, five minutes maybe of training. Whereas Pat's group, they're getting some training blended with some of that gamification. So your daily training session is probably a little longer, but they're Mm -hmm. probably competing with each other. He's got gamification, if you will, point of sale, point of training. You have back end point. Okay, let's keep going with this. I hit a color and I get a question. If the square has a question mark. Ah, okay. And so I got it. Square has a question mark. I hit it. I get a question. And if I get it right, it goes away. The color goes away? The color goes away if you fill it in with the color that it is. So if it's a green square and I hit, I select the green color, all the squares that I've now touched turn that color and I fill my way in. So the, the this is beyond is, me. I don't have a PhD in color. Yeah. I mean, in fact, I'm I, colorblind. I, I, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's really simple. I've already done my questions. Otherwise, I would show you. So it's built into the app. You guys yeah. did that? Yeah. I want that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so oh, again, oh, that's the thing. <laughs> really. And there's a bunch of different games. Mm-hmm. You've been holding back on me. <laughs> I know. I know. We've been, we've been reserving it. We're but, just a bunch uh, of nerds. Are, are you serious? Are you serious? This isn't uh, for open public? The we, we, we've been, Again, we've been very careful to deploy this because, again, we wanted to be thoughtful about at extending the time because it does increase the time that people are trading. It does. And, but the beauty of it, if I can just interrupt yeah, yeah, real, real quick, is you can only do the games 
when you're doing your daily questions. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I can go on throughout oh. the day and just do <clears throat> all right. games all day long. Right. So it's intentional. And it does, yeah, maybe it's 10 minutes. I see some of my guys, like they're counting the squares to see how many they have left and they get into it where I'm just like spray and pray. Like I'm going to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Where's all the content coming from? So we build that in house, or at least we, so today's class has been around for a long time. We had a lot of legacy content, but to have it behave in this way, this adaptive question, man, we got to convert it or translate it. So we've got a team led by Paul Pate. Jim Kokonis is now on the team uh, as of about a month ago. Good for us. Um, so we're continuing to build the staff, but but what they've found is they, they've had to think a little differently about how they deliver the training. Instead of, let's say, doing a 10 module course that is comprehensive, we need to break it down into these smaller pieces that scale people from fundamentals up to diagnostic that are all interconnected in different ways. So that's really the the process that, that Paul's you know evolved over the past few years. Now we work with outside subject matter experts because we're not the experts in everything. So we have ADOS experts and EV experts. We work with Hunter and, and Tia and ALI and these other groups that have the expertise in these areas where we've really become proficient is taking that dense, comprehensive information, trying to convert it in this way that's very accessible and measurable. So let me ask you both a question, AJ and Pat. Patrick, because you can select what your people see, can you select it by individuals if you're looking to build a great career path for a technology specialist to groom himself up and individuals is, listen, I want more of this stuff coming at them? Yeah, 100 percent. There's it's funny. There's the learner zone. There's a reporting zone. There's the admin zone you have access to in the app or on the desktop. But yeah, each user profile has their own trajectory that they're on. And you have that ability to kind of kind of choose what that looks like for that individual. What's really cool too is they have communities that each user can join if they want on their own, but then I can make one for my specific shop and I can create content that the guys can consume. If I want to make an example of how to update a GM module, I can go ahead and create a post and share that to them. So that way it becomes a central spot for data and sharing information. But is that, a, will those be required questions that they need to answer right? Or are you just talking to communities? It's more of a reference material okay. that they have All in right. that case. So, so think of it like having a folder that's available on the app that's just available. Pat shop, he can add text, videos, images that his team now has access to. Training in your pocket, community in your pocket. Yeah. It's, I didn't it's know information. That. It's sounds like we're going to talk, AJ. Yeah, we we're, got, yeah. Yeah, it's, we're, we're uh, homework. I got <laughs> homework. And I want the game thing. Yeah. I want to play the color. <laughs> and I want it now. Yeah, I want it now. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I mean, similar to where, where we started initially with, with what Pat just shared there. I mean, it, it is about this technical training information, yes, but it's also about sharing relevant information that he's got or somebody on his staff has. And to, if we can capture that, and make that easily accessible to others on the team, we win. Like we all win. Not, not, not me specifically, but the yeah, making that information available is just key. Well, wow. why would people not want to be on this thing? I think some of the challenges that we run into is it, it is a very different model. The management of something like this is different in terms of you got to be on your team consistently to the using. If, if you subscribe to this platform and use it twice a month, it's it's a waste of your money. You so, got to be all in on it. Yeah. The period. This is going to be not only am I going to bring my people to vision and not only will we do the occasional lunch and learns and we're going to go to localized hands on training, but this is part of our culture of learning. Well, yeah, we talk about the it's a complement to your overall training curriculum, because look, if you're here, you're already the one percent of the one percent. Right. Just to be here. Yeah. But if you think that, oh, I sent my guys to Vision KC, I'm good. I can just, you know. Yeah, I'm good for the year. Yeah, yeah done. it doesn't yeah. work like that, right? right there, there, there needs to be a daily, a monthly, a quarterly, an annual. Just like you have a marketing plan and a budget, you need to have a training plan and a budget. And understand what that looks like, forecast that, budget for it, implement. And it needs to just be intentional. It's part of being a shop owner. The job description for your people is so many hours and the participation and the download. Yeah. I mean, so today's class is an integrated part of your perpetual studency, your culture. Yeah, that's a minimum level of expectations. How about you guys? I know you're an incredible franchise group, but is it store specific or is the whole company doing it? It's store specific right now. For us, I have a hard time sending a guy to training after he's worked for 10 or 11 hours yeah. for a day. Right. So I got to build value in the training and in the knowledge. And some of my guys are there, some aren't. And the ones that aren't there, they at least find value and confidence in this and at least kind of plants that seed. So I'm more about planting the seed and 
watching it grow. Mm -hmm. He said something so important. I got to opine on. He says 10, 11 hour days. That's why you bring them here because they can do 10 or 11 hour days and network and learn without having to work every day. And they just go out and try to absorb. And that's why, as I said to an an earlier podcast, I've seen more and more and more. I mean, I've got to guess there's 50, 60, 100 shops here that brought their teams, closed, brought their teams. Yep. It's great. It's the investment. It's, it's an investment. It's an investment. And, it's, and, and so is today's class. I mean, to me, this perpetual studency thing is part of the culture of we're going to beat this. We're going to be great. We're going to track our productivity because we're doing this. It's funny, too, because signing up is not the easiest thing to do. It's kind of like Fight Club, the movie, like, don't talk about it. <laughs> I filled out the thing online because I heard uh, Matt Fonzo talk about it. Next thing I know, I get an email saying, we'll schedule a call. It's like, what yep. do I sign up for? Yep. And there's like three or four interviews and it's, it makes you appreciate the platform that much more. That's true. I went through the same thing. It was, it is funny. He's mentioned that there is a, a robust onboarding to it to make sure that the, the expectations are crystal clear too. Mm-hmm. You know, Stop it. Yep. You care who, who's on. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. You they vet care. them. They, they do. Gra- they greatly care. Yep. Wow. Yep. Well, so right. it's, I love that. It's only going to work if you're going to use it over the long haul. So we're looking to save you some hassle, but also find the right folks that'll be with us for the long term. If we have someone that subscribes for two months and they, it's not a fit for them. This isn't wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Exactly. Yeah. So we would rather do that work on the front. We've actually shifted that a bit. So it's not as, not as, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, we, we've kind of, we, what we've done is we've developed what we call a, a 90 day launch process where now folks that come in, we've loosened a bit on the vetting for lack of a better term, uh, but just tried to set expectations. And then we put them into a 90 day cycle where we can standardize the onboarding process for them, give them everything that they need, but it also gives them enough time to where they get to the end of it. They say, yeah, this fits or no, my folks didn't like it or they liked it, but I'm going to do something different. It gives them an opportunity to have a good informed decision. And then if it If we both want to go forward, then we we move from there. So you got to be all in in order to make this work. Yeah. Yeah. See the value. 100%. All in. I love it. 90 day vetting. If it's not for you, we get it. You're out. Yeah. Or at least have someone that's the champion. At least have someone that's the ambassador of the program. I like your, I like your point. It may not. And I know, I know if I know you, you're the champion and the ambassador. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't mean that it always has to be the owner. It could be the general manager, it could be the shop foreman, right? You're the shop foreman, right? Correct. And and you own this thing. He owns it. Love it. See? Wow. What do your people say to you? In regards to? Not the (laughs) cook. Oh my God. At work. It was one of my famous loaded questions, wasn't it? I can go a lot of different ways with that. Yeah. So what do your people say to you? <laughs> yeah. We were about ready to get a yeah. tidbit there, yeah. weren't we? <laughs> a lot like AJ, honestly. Like, I got the target on my back. We just had a, a conversation about it. You wouldn't think this platform would kind of open up deep conversations, but it does. Like, I want my guys to stab me in the front. So if I'm not holding up my part of the deal, then call me out. And if I can't handle that, that's my problem. How much time do you spend on the back end with today's class to manage, to watch it, to massage it? More and more. The, the more that I explore it, the more I, questions I have, and then I can reach out to my point of contact and give him my thoughts or seek feedback so I can make it work for us. And I also want to make the platform better. Is today's class part of the daily huddle or the weekly huddle? Not as, but it was. I, I was funny. We were just talking about this earlier. It's, uh, you know, if I didn't have my your muffies on, I tell you, but like, it's called the hat in hand kind of like conversation you need to have with your people. Like, look, we have a, a core value. It's grow or die. Right. And especially this is the kind of conversation you need to have with people if if you're struggling with the implementation and the usage of the platform. But look, I want to understand what what are those obstacles in your way from being able to to train on a regular basis? When I hired you and we onboarded you, we again, I wanted to make sure we were crystal clear on the expectation that training is a requirement. Right. It's ingrained in who we are. What is it that you need from me? to be able to make this work, to get you to the next level. What is it that I'm missing, right? And so when you are intentional in in having that hat in hand type conversation with your people, they'll understand that it's who we are. And again, if you ain't growing, you're dying, right? If you're not growing, then you're being stagnant. And that just means everyone is growing. Everyone else is growing. And that gap is getting wider, right? So you are dying. And so you need to make sure that, especially in this industry, with the advancement of these vehicles and the new technologies that we're seeing, like, It is a requirement. And so just when you're crystal clear in creating that expectation and then you gamify it and, you know, you sprinkle it with with incentives or whatever it might be, you get people on board. Right. Soon to be colors. Soon to be colors. Soon to be colors. 
I don't, yeah, maybe we can get Tetris on this thing. That'd be awesome. But with that being said, it's, we look at the participation rate, right? And I just pulled it up right now. And right now it's 83% before it may have been 60%. So we're moving that needle, right? So you can see the participation rate moving up. Then you, you see, you also understand when you first implement it, that your baseline knowledge, right? And then over time, you can kind of see where your current knowledge level's at. There's always going to be that ink. Your people are smarter as a result of using this than they were when you started using yeah. it. Okay. Guaranteed. A, a question about retention and recruitment. Let me go to you, Patrick. Somebody sits in front of you who's interviewing for a job of the, as a mechanical specialist inside the company. And part of the questions that he asks you is, what do you guys do for training? And you explain to him today's class. What did they say? Are they moved by the fact that you have this level of commitment? I would think so. If they truly want to be a credible voice or person in this industry, they, they have to be. Okay. Um, That's an answer for recruitment. And do you hire at the place or does someone else hire for you? I'm the first vetting process. Okay. You are. Do you think if somebody came up to you and says, I'm out of here, what's going on? What did we do? How was the training? Do I, today's class, but I'm moving on for other reasons. The wife had got a job in another city. I mean, anybody talk about the value that you bring, the tools you bring for training, be it vision, be it today's class. I would love to know how it's impacting the people that work for you. I think in a lot of ways, honestly, and it, to give a, I guess, a deeper answer for us, it always starts with the personal life. If we can get their heart straight and work with them personally, then anything I ask them to do, they buy in. Most of the problems, like if a guy comes in and he looks downcast, like I used to take that as personal, like, oh, it's something with the shop. But most times it's stuff he's bringing in from home. So we deal with that. And then the training, whatever we need. I got their hearts, then I got their attitude. That is 100%. just so big, AJ. That's it. Your yeah. scope on retention and recruitment. Yep. Yeah. As far as it relates to this and the training, they, yeah. they understand the value of it. They, they ultimately do. And also to anytime I hire someone, I call it the rant. I rant a lot. But when I'm like that last line before they become, they have that opportunity to become an employee with us. But I go over every one of those core values. I talk about the core purpose. I talk about our origin story. I talk about why we're here, why we get up every day, why we hop out of bed, right? I touch on, of course, that, that grow or die mentality. And, and then as a result of that core value, there's a set of expected behaviors. These are the things that we need to see as far as traits from you. And this is the expectation from you in being with us. Wow. I learned more than I, every time I, I get together with you, David, I learn more and more about, and I think this was brilliant to bring in, you know, AJ and Patrick to talk about how they're using your software. Now, my question to you is, do you think they're using it to their fullest capacity? AJ's not using I'm the not, games. I need the games. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm livid. <laughs> no, so I think. <laughs> want some games. Uh, well, and we can even turn on uh, team scoreboards for games too. And yeah. that's where. That's that, what we're using. Yeah. So he, they, it's really cool. They, what I love is like the, the level of, I don't know if I should be talking about this because maybe it'll, it'll increase your workload, but they will make custom reports, custom text message campaigns, things like that. So I mentioned that we reset to zero every quarter, but also too, I've got them sending me last week's total report every quarter. And then I import that into my scoreboard. I have a scoreboard in the back of the shop at every store and they can see that top 10 list and see where everyone everyone is ranking where everyone's at. So they, the people love to see, you know, where they're at, you know, on there. So, which is good, but I'm missing out on some stuff. Yeah. So we're, we're constantly adding features and, and trying to enhance the, the experience. There are for every shop like Patrick's and AJ's, you know, there's shops that might be needing something different. I mean, we're, we're fortunate here, you know, these two groups are excellent. I can't say that every customer has is as thrilled as, as these guys are, are, you know, reporting to me. So we've got work to do and trying to understand what their unique needs are different from theirs. I mean, we can't make every single thing custom, but we've got a lot of levers that we could pull to try and create an experience that fits. But it really comes down to if the individuals at the shop are willing to come in and do the work each day, we're going to do everything we can to try and make sure they're served up what they need. But it's kind of that balancing act. Okay, final question. Let's wrap this up. I may... Shop owner, AJ, sell me on today's class. So if you're a shop owner and you want to be relevant, you need to make the investment, right? And that is in training. And again, I'm telling you, I think the number one obstacle and barrier to entry is time. There isn't anything simpler on the market that I've seen. And so if you're struggling with getting your guys or gals on board, look, they got a 90 day orientation, right? They have that try, try before you buy, right? And so how much again, time do my people have to spend on this, AJ? Uh, how many, how many, how many hours a day? A couple minutes oh. sitting down on a porcelain seat. Uh -huh. oh, that's it. And the wife is knocking and say, listen, get out of there. I got to yeah, get in there. Exactly. I'm training. I'm training. Stay away. Stay away. This is my happy place. So yeah, hundred percent. No excuse. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>
turned into potty talk on the show. Right. The show so, oh, we sure didn't want that to happen. But <laughs> you're always an image. You shouldn't you're, have invited he, me. He's, you're an image yeah. guy. <laughs> he always he always sends images through. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay with what he said? Yeah, of course. You, you realize the real world. I'm the only one that'll say it out loud. What, so. One of our first marketing campaigns is we like we've certainly evolved a bit in terms of how we do that. But one of our very first things was playing off that. You know, it was image of a bathroom stall. Yeah, so, I find the time. Yep, yeah. I have to go. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Instead of reading the paper, yeah. I hope you're training in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sell me, Patrick. I agree wholeheartedly. For the cost that you're going to pay per month and the benefit that you're going to get out of it, it's a no-brainer. It's available. It's quick. Unifies everybody. I mean, you got a full package for something that's simple and accessible. Last word. What's new that we should know about? Uh, that you're willing to tell us. Yeah, there, there's, yeah. So, so overall, I would summarize it as that we are trying to increase the connectivity between the technicians and service providers who use the platform and our content, but also one another. So we want to increase the information that's able to share. But what Pat described there in terms of using what we call communities and discover where they can share information, I would describe those like version one of that, but we intend to, we want to increase the ability, particularly for, for groups like, you know, so if AJ's got five locations, he might have somebody in one location that's very knowledgeable that folks could lean on for expertise. We intend to help bridge that gap a bit, you know, within the app and the learning experience where we can, today's class can provide content that can help you with your job, but make it easier for you to communicate with your folks as well through things like Discover. I failed to ask you about Service Advisor. Mm -hmm. Help me with that. Yeah, so we provide training for service advisors as well. So we started out more on the technical side, but our service advisor series focuses on technical training that's geared for a service advisor. So it's not trying Perfect. to teach them how to repair something, but give them the terminology, the, the functional understanding of something so that they can have an appropriate conversation with the customer, but also with a tech. But then it also comes along with communication skills, listening and questioning techniques, communication barriers, all those types of things. I love that. And we're trying to enhance that as well. Any stuff for managers? Getting in there. Little by little. So financial reporting was one of the first stages there, but it's something that we're going to continue to build out. But we're also working with a number of partners on those things as well, because again, we recognize that we aren't the subject matter experts and everything. So for example, we've uh, partnered with AMRA and we're now bringing their UICS through the platform as well. You will know, be working with other groups as well to, to continue to enhance the company okay. offerings. UIES? UICS. UICS. And remember, we're always guilty for popping acronyms and yep. never explaining. Can you tell us what that means? Yeah. So for folks that aren't familiar with, with AMRA, I would encourage you to go to, I don't know if it's AMRA.com or AMRA.org, but in their MAP standards, the Motorist Assurance Program yep. is something yep. that- We've done that, shows. Oh, We've yeah, done shows. Great. So, so basically all their, their condition codes that are available, if you're a member, if you're a MAP member, yep. it's connected through the app and you can search up all this information directly through the Motorist platform. Assurance Program. You know how many people that don't know about that? Too many. So I that, know. So we're working with them to try to promote through our user base and, and some, some joint marketing, but that's a relatively new feature. We're actually coming out of a beta test with that with some groups where right. that search will be available more wow. broadly. I thought this was a great episode and I, we're at a training event. What better place to talk about perpetual training all the time? All the time. Every day, no matter where you sit. It never stops. <laughs> that's right. Always be growing. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, David Boyce, president of today's class. Thank you for all that you're doing and for these guys loving your product. Patrick Roberts, shop foreman at Christian Brothers and AJ Neely, Neely's Auto Tire Center, five locations, Maryland. Thank you guys so much for being here. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys you. both. Appreciate it.